So eternal rock of ages, we worship you. And so the sovereign God, we say there's none like you. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you for bringing us here this morning again. Thank you, O Lord, because you are God. As we come right here, Daddy, to learn at your feet. Speak to us in the name of Jesus, O Lord. That it is not in the hearing, it is in the doing. Help us, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning again. Uh, can somebody remind us of what we learned or you took away from here last week very quickly before we go into today? I had to check the topic myself. My wife said it was seeking God. I said, oh, yeah, we did something, but that wasn't exactly the topic, so I went to check. At least the topic. Kingdom of God, very good. God bless you. God bless the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. And we should do everything to seek his kingdom. Let us do everything to seek his kingdom. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning we want to, um, I believe we all have it. Yeah. Ah, okay. We want to talk about what? Anger. This is a very broad topic. It is very, this is very small. What I don't realize. Okay. It's a very broad topic, but may God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So our memory verse is um, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 9. Can we have that? Ecclesiastes 7 verse 9. Let somebody read for us if he's not ready. 7 verse 9. Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry. For anger rests in the bosom of fools. For anger rests in the bosom of fools. Do not be hasty. Do not quick. That's the hasty to, to, to be angry so that you not be a fool in the name of Jesus. We will not be fools in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And our passage is from Ephesians 4, 26 to 27. Let somebody read that for us very quickly as well. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 26 to 27 is on the screen. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. It's the same thing. So don't let anger, don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. Don't let the sun go down while you are. I want us to still hold on to the thought that while you are still angry. Let's leave that on one side. We'll come back to it. Um... Let somebody read the introduction for us before we go into it. Into the, I want us to read slowly so that we, I believe you all have it. Let us listen so that because we are, that's where we're going to um, contribute and take discussions from. I actually like this because sometimes you have the problem and when you're looking at the abstract, you don't see the solution really, you know. But I like this. There is that you see the problem, you know, you see the reason and you see the solution. So we have the three right here. So introduction, let somebody read for us introdu that anger, introductory part. Yes. Anger is a negative emotion characterized by bitterness towards someone or something, especially when there is a perceived wrong. It often ignites powerful, restless, aggressive feelings and behaviors. The feeling of anger arises due to how we interpret or react to certain situations. Anger is said to be temporary madness because it reacts, because it takes over the mind and body and removes the ability to reason with no respect for dignity and friendship. Anger management is gaining control over our emotions and the ability to regulate rage. We can be angry, but it must be managed and not degenerate into sin. Amen. So I'm going to take it from here. Anger is a negative emotion characterized by bitterness. Leave it there. Anger is a negative emotion. Do we agree? Yes. 
or it's just an emotion? Why, sir? My disagreement is about negative emotion. Human emotion is supposed to help the individual navigate certain things. Now, it may not be a totally positive emotion, but it is not a completely negative emotion because it forces you into certain action as characterized by the introduction. So I'll give an example. Anger is a self-defense. You react against whether it's a perceived wrong or it's a real wrong. Anger moves you into a reaction mode. And I will give a practical example. Years ago, we were in year two in the university, and around 10 at night, somebody just ran into our room. We were actually sleeping. And he woke us up to barricade the door. Somebody was chasing him from the third ground floor to the third floor. So when people intervened, people started laughing at him that you, you are running from a fellow man. You are running from a fellow man. He said, when, the way the guy shouted downstairs, he was sure that guy was angry. And he said, me, I was not angry. That if he catches me, he will pick me and throw me down. He knew that guy was going to be able to overcome him by the level of anger that the guy already had. And he said he hadn't gone to that level. So the point I'm making is that the anger is not totally positive. But if, if it had no use, nature would not inspire you to function in that space. And the first part we read is that be not haste to get angry. He didn't say don't be angry. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, do we agree or do you have any other? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. The first thing that came to my mind is what of righteous anger. <laughs> Because I feel like, I think I also remember the, t the time when Jesus Christ saw those merchants that were selling wares outside the, like, the temple and he like scattered. I don't think that was an emotion that didn't come out of anger. So I think maybe it's a thing of, like there's righteous anger, there's holy anger, there's anger against injustice. But I also feel that maybe the idea that anger is characterized by bitterness. I feel like, I feel like it's not always bitterness that is the root of anger. Sometimes anger can come as a result of a perceived like injustice or wrong. Um, but I think I, I would say though from a biblical perspective, it's the idea of okay, you get angry. Do you stay in that anger? Do you move on from it? What like emotions or actions does it inspire? Does it inspire actions that align with the word of God that, that I think God would be proud of? So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, there's no right or wrong about this. We are here to learn. We see different perspectives, you know. But um, like the Buddha mentioned when Jesus was um, angry. So are we saying that we can justify anger? Is there? Can, so there are some angers that, you know, that you actually can, you can just, do we have angers that you, like that. Can we justify anger? I think it's still on the, the, uh, a comment on negative emotion. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we look at our lives, right, um, just bringing it to reality of how we react, let's say husband and wife on an issue, um, and anger is expressed in that circumstance, which happens, right, over an issue, we maybe we step on each other on certain issues. In that context, if we reflect properly, if I reflect on some of those outbursts, I think it's probably what the Bible is saying here that the negative outburst that we have on our day-to-day -day and how we manage that uh, could come out of maybe bitterness of not necessarily having the proper communication about issues that we should, which I think is what is being addressed here, that we should, I mean, I've heard everything that's been said and that's true, but in terms of just the outburst that comes as a result of probably not communicating well, those are the ones that should be addressed and knit in the board of why not have good co communication skills, develop the communication skills where you have those conversations without busting out. Uh, and then, of, of course, if it's a perceived wrong, you can tease it out from communicating effectively versus busting out in anger. Praise God. God bless you, yes. 
you know, I like passive drone. You see, this is the thing. I, there, are, there, are some, there are some angers. Okay, sir. Say that um, for me, I'm struggling with the characterized by bitterness. Uh, oftentimes, you could have anger that is spontaneous because something happened. But for anger to get to the stage of bitterness, it has gone beyond the spontaneous event. It is something that somebody has brooded upon and allowed to take root, has made up their mind that this is who this person is, and that's when you begin to be bitter towards them. A total stranger on the street you don't know before steps on your feet. You can be angry at the moment. I can't you look at where you are going, but you don't put it in your mind. It's an event that has passed. But when we now say anger is characterized by bitterness towards someone, I'm struggling with that one. Because many times, it's supposed to be. yeah, but that, that is no longer anger. That is total bitterness and, and malice. You are wishing that person, you, you get it. So I, I'm, I'm struggling, but the point is, Anger is a good valve release sometimes. Yeah? Sometimes you need to get it out or else you'll be burning inside. That's one. Two, anger can be positive. If you are angry about your current situation, normally it should propel you to get out of it. Right? So, so, I don't want us to paint anger as totally bad, but I think anger is bad from our memory verse itself. It says why it becomes bad. When the thing that happened yesterday, I'm still angry about it today. That's poison. Even some people 30 years after. <laughs> I think my wife and uh, Esther, then they will come back to you. They will consider we'll be not stuck here. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Yeah, because she did. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's make it very brief, please. I feel that um, anger is an emotion, just like it says right here. Emotion, whether it is um, anger or happiness or whatever, it's an emotion. But if you look at the definition of anger, it says it's a strong feeling of annoyance displeasure, hostility. That is not good. So I feel that it is in the context of what it is, not, not justifying you to not have that emotion. That's what I'm getting from this. It's, it's an emotion, but it's not a positive emotion. That's what this is saying from what I can get from it. It is a negative emotion because the meaning of anger the definition of anger is not a positive one. It's just like you being ha happy but because something happens. It's an emotion, but it's a positive emotion. It does not mean that we should not be angry because even the Bible says be angry, but do not sin. But I feel like what in this context, it's talking about anger itself being a negative emotion versus happiness. Being a positive emotion. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. So, yes, ma'am. So, very quickly, for me, I might not say that anger is a negative um, emotion per se, because uh, it can spur you into doing something positive, something good. And I have a, an example. I remember when my daughter, when she just um, got into high school back here. So, <laughs> at the end of the year, they'll give us, they'll give them the very good ones, they'll give them presents for doing well in their subjects and all that. And she was like, she didn't get any presents. So she was crying. So the principal of the school saw her, the proprietor saw her and said, ah, Damala, why are you crying? And she was like, she didn't get it. Okay, you know what? Have an holy anger. Be angry in your spirit that next year I must get presents. And indeed, the following year, she got so many presents. So she went to go and show the principal. She was like, you see, I told you, just be angry in your spirit. Just have that holy anger. Be annoyed that why should I not get a present? Why should I get, not get a prize? So it can spur you into doing something really very good. So to me, negative is that word that I'm not so comfortable with. Praise God. Amen. 
And may God help us in the name of Jesus. And that's why most people actually just agree that anger is just an emotion. Anger is just an emotion. They don't have to put the connotation negative because it could be positive as well. It depends on how you look at it. But I want to, I want to, I want to um, kind of um, shed light on some things. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. There's a difference between anger and aggression. You see, anger itself, uh, this is a very broad topic. Anger itself is an emotion. It's not, that's what the Bible says, it's so that you can be angry and not sin. I'll give you an example. When you are being cut off, maybe on the street somebody's driving, or they, they signal to the left and they're making a the right turn, then you hungry. angry. It's justified. But now, the aggression part is this. When you flip your middle finger, when you cuss them out now, that's, that's when you are now, that's the, that's the aggression part. That's when you are, that's the aggression. So there's difference. If you are able to come to the, if you are able to um, come to the realization or get to that point where you angry, but it is what you do with the anger that's going to determine if it's positive or negative. But there's also a part that I'm yet to really tie down because I also feel very strongly that sometimes you do nothing with the anger, then you bottle things up. You get to this point right here that now the next thing is for somebody to get a gun and just look at that school that, oh, they've been, they've been doing this for so long. They're hearing it today. Oh, my God. And now, ask them. They won't forget. On the 20th of this, that person said this. On this, that, that person did that. And now, so... Generally, anger doesn't happen in isolation. There is something before, usually. So that's what I'm saying. You can be angry or it's be angry and sin not. I'm going to read aggression for us. Aggression, meanwhile, is a, is a behavior where the intention is to do what? Harm someone or something. Now, when you look at the someone there, you look at people from afar. It may be that person that did, like I said, that's cool. But some, sometimes it's very close. Your loved ones, your wife, your mother, your children, you're angry, bitter. That's the bitter part. Because if you don't deal with anger, you bottle it up, it's going to grow. It gets to that point of bitterness. And you are, trust me, it's, a, it's not a matter of um, if, it's, as, when, right? That's what they say. You're going to explode, and it's going to be bad. You're going to stop talking to your mom or your father. You're going to come call them out. You're going to do it. You won't even believe. In fact, you're going to justify it. So anger is quite different from aggression. We, we kind of mix things up. That's the way I can explain it, That because to tell you that you cannot be angry, some people believe or they say it's actually a normal human emo emotion. I was going to ask that, but because of time. Let, actually, let's go to where Pastor Bonadi just mentioned. Let's look at Matthew 21. Let us look at Matthew 21. Uh, please, Matthew 21. Or if you have, let's, let's read it for us so that we don't. Uh, Matthew 21. Let's start from 12. Anybody? We have our Bibles. Matthew 21, 12. Yes. Okay. KJV or NLT? Uh, I like KJV, but. It doesn't okay, matter. I'll just read from the screen. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple. And overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold those. Stay there. Stay there. Twelve. Stay on twelve. That so and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers. Stay here. And the seats of them that sold those. Now, here aggression again. I'm going to read again. Aggression, meanwhile, is a behavior where the intention is to harm someone 
or something. So do you, is this a negative aggression or is it just an emotion? Aggression. Right? Oftentimes when we're asked, what does that mean? The perspective of the spectators of okay. the act. Mm -hmm. Because many times you get into the reaction phase of a person's, in quote, anger without knowing what happened before. And so when you, when you are observing this current situation, like my dad will say, he say when you, when, when you display anger publicly, in this context of they don't know what happened before, they only see two of you fighting. The conclusion is that look at these two fools fighting on the street. However, one of the fools might be justified to engage in that physical, right? So, so, so in this case, Jesus knew why he was uh, upturning because the house of God is not a market. And so he was justified to expel them. Now, maybe the manner of expelling them, whoever observed it might rightfully say, good. Anybody who has the mindset that this should not happen in this place, we say, ah, thank God for this person doing this. Those who think that ah, it's not too bad, now they are just selling, they are trying to make a living. Ah, that man's own is too much. So again, it depends. Somebody's hero will become somebody's billion. Yes, but sir. I think so. In order not to be misunderstood, and I think that's the point. Amen. In order not to be misunderstood, let's just bottle in the anger and address it in more peaceable ways. Yes, sir. Before we go to the ad line, let me just say something very quickly. Sometimes when we are angry, like Pastor Bolade said, you actually, you are not aware sometimes. So people, this is what I'm saying. That sometimes when people have anger issues, they, they, they don't know that they, are, they have problem. But it is the wife, the children, or sometimes they at work that, or wherever they are advised that go and see a counselor. Because they are not, see, they, in their mind it's normal because, and this is why. Sometimes you are able to take three whatever. Sometimes it's for so what we can take depends. You know, our level of tolerance differs. So it depends. What I'm going to classify as anger is not the same way as, as you want to classify. It depends. Sometimes they cut you off. Oh, maybe wasn't thinking. But until when you get to that point, but the people that are looking at you, they're able to see at some point that I think you need help. I think you need help. So in the case of Jesus, it just didn't happen in isolation because if you look at John 2, and maybe 13 or thereabout, it had been happening. Maybe he told them before, this is my father's house. You cannot continue to do this. It is unacceptable. And those people, what they were actually doing was not just selling. They were basically money doublers as well. They were collecting money from them. That was the only currency that they used in the, in the, in the, uh, in the temple. Because they were making money, ripping people off and doing other things. So he just got to that point that this is not right. It's just like when people do things in the church of God and you get to that point and saying that this is just not right. But again, it's what we do with it. May God help us in the name of Jesus. And that's why I believe that you can address it without getting to that point that where, you are, where you explode. Don't let it get to that point that where you are going to explode because oftentimes it's not always good. Let someone help us with the outline A or one very quickly. We can spend the whole day on just uh, this, but may God help us in the name of Jesus. Anger triggers. Or should I ask, do we get angry? So what are our triggers? You as a person, do you get angry if, you, if the answer is yes, why? Tones. Tones of conversation. Tone? Tone, yes. Okay. Or just careless <laughs> ways of communication. Those could be even. That's true. Other person, anybody? Injustice. When people are unfair, it's really Injustice. To me. Injustice. Right. Yes. But again, there's that's also that perception part that it is perceived the way you perceive it. So sometimes to you, uh, this person, so that's why it's good to be, maybe talk, try to, you know, mitigate it. Um, anger, let's read. As humans, so that you will not take the whole time, actually, let me do it differently. As humans, we have triggers that make us angry. This is very tiny. Can we put it on the board? Okay. As humans, we have triggers that make us angry, and this could be from trivial to serious concerns. Leviticus 10, 16 to 17. Anger issues also stem from a strong feeling that is oriented toward some real or supposed grief. Some real. 
Some real, some, so meaning it's not real sometimes. Some people get angry at the red light, for example. Ah, taking too long to turn green. God. And now they take it on somebody else. <laughs> oh, yeah, believe me. So, <laughs> and that's why I said that sometimes when you notice this pattern, then you can bring it up to the person because they are not seeing it. They're just seeing the red light taking forever to turn from green to red. So imagine that person would do when you hurt them. Oh, my. So um, next, go ahead. The next one, the next slide, okay. Other triggers of anger include, let's go back to um, one. Let's go back to the, uh, the triggers, the beginning, with where are we? The one before this, before we come to that. As humans, we have triggers that make us angry, and this could be from trivial or to serious concerns. I want us to read Leviticus 10, 16, 17. Let's put it on the board if you can do it on the screen. Leviticus 10, 16 to 17. If you have, let, let us read. And Moses diligently saw the, the goat of the sin offering. Moses saw what? The goat, an animal. And behold, it was burnt, and it was hungry with Eliezer and Itama, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive and say, which were left alive and saying, Let's go back to 16 before we go 17. So in this case, okay, let's I'm sorry, let's do 17, then we'll come back to it. Where, wherefore have you not eaten the sin offering in the holy place? Sin it is most holy. And God has given it to you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for, for them before the Lord. So can we, do you think uh, Moses was right in that case? Do you consider that to be justifiable anger? For, because they brought the, 16, go to 16. They brought the goat, the goat that they brought. And when did Jesus saw the goat of the sin offering? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I think justifiable is always going to be a relative term. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if you read this part, it meant they should, one, they should know because he saw the priest. Mm -hmm. There was a practice of what they ought to do. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, they chose not to do it. Mm -hmm. And so in that instance, he got angry. Now, the point is this. It might not just be about the goat. It might be repeated mishaps. And one of the things I was looking to see in the trigger, maybe somewhere else, is that people get angry or lose control of anger based on some two things. Number one is experience. So people transfer experiences of the past or whatever they are dealing with with what they are seeing. And a quick example is if a child in a different part of the world misbehaves, the mother will bring a cane and beat that child. There are so many of us that will stop playing football at four because you know your mother will drive in at four or five. And you knew the consequences. So when the mother is correcting a child, it's fine. But when you are correcting a child and saying, see how he looks like his father, that is what your father always does. You have crossed the line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's where the problem always is. And in Moses' case, as a final point, the Bible tells us he was a stammerer. People who can't express themselves verbally resort to violence very easily. And that's one thing we must also, also keep in mind. And that's why people need help. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very true, sir. May God help us in the name of Jesus. But online? Okay. okay. Sorry, I just had a comment. And I think we need to... There's something that Pastor Bumi said that I feel like we, we didn't focus on it. So, anger is a negative emotion. And I think we, I would like for us to agree it is a negative emotion. And I'm going to use scripture to back up what I want to say. So James 1.19, it says, My dearly beloved brothers, understand this. Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. There's a reason why that scripture says you should be slow to anger. Because 99% of the time, what will come out of your anger may not be what Damala experienced as a child. So when the Bible is saying, go, be slow to anger. It's because that anger, it is a negative emotion in itself. Now, the result of it may turn out positive, like Damala's case. And that scripture that we're using to justify our anger, when we say, oh, the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Be angry is not go and get angry. It is, I understand your anger, but what comes out of it should not be sin. So I just wanted us to just agree, except it's okay to just be, I, I don't vex. But don't worry, I won't do anything. And I'll just go around squeezing my face that I'm angry. But what comes out of it? I didn't commit sin, so it's okay. Your disposition in itself when you're angry is already sin. Because you are upset. So the way I'll treat Deborah when I'm angry. No, that's not, that's not, not that we should not be upset. 
It says be slow to get into that point. So I think I just don't want us to go away from that point. That it is a negative emotion. It is not a good emotion. If I'm angry, I'm not going. My output will never be the best. When I'm angry, I, I will not put my best to what I'm doing because I'm already upset. So I think I just wanted us to just not run away from it. Anger is a negative emotion. I know how we feel because the Bible says be angry but sin not. It's not telling us go and vex. No. Cool down before you vex. Like take it easy step by step before you vex. I just wanted to add that because I think I'm on her side. Praise the Lord. Amen. I also hear you. We're going to get to where how to deal with anger. You see, the thing is, this, that's the truth of the matter. It is impo- it's almost, it's almost impossible to be, and that's why the Bible says it's a negative emotion. It's almost impossible for you to be angry and not do something after. Not squeeze your face. Not do this. That's why the Bible says it's in, because it's almost impossible for you to be angry. It's just like when, um, when you, maybe your wife is angry with you and you, you are yet to apologize and so you want to just continue like that. You know, it does, it, so the anger doesn't happen, like I said, doesn't happen in isolation. Something before. So that's why it's a negative because it's hard, it's hard not to do something else. But I also want us not to, um, Go out of here with um, self-righteousness, earlier than thou attitude, that we, that we don't get angry and all that, and you justify yourself, you look at the mirror, and you lie to your very self. <laughs> and you lie to your very self. I, 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 you know, so that's, that's, that's always hard for me. You know, that's always, um, what I don't do, I find it hard to say. You know, I'll, like this, you have the principles I like the way Pastor Balade will be. Pastor Balade says, do I, this is very good. I don't do it, though. It's hard. So sometimes you have that, but this is what the Bible says. So there is a negative emotion because of what you are going to do, no matter how, how small, how big. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Where was I? On the tree. <laughs> uh, I clicked something. I was going to say, yeah. Okay, yeah. But uh, to uh, Pastor Balade, uh, Pastor uh, Demola said, but. Um, I agree with what you said, sir, but Moses had had killed someone in the past. So Moses killed someone, angry about the goat, angry about the red light. Now now talk to this and he struck the. So maybe, I don't know, I'm not judging his personality. I'm just saying that I'm just saying that maybe when you look at the scripture, when God now said, even the land that you are, although you're not gonna get it, but come on the mountain, see how beautiful that land is, you know. Maybe. So sometimes you have, to, when people are telling you or they're trying to let you know, don't be angry at them. Look at it that maybe there's a pattern in what I'm doing. There's a pattern. Sometimes it's just, there are sometimes there are small things. Because I don't want to believe that as Christians, you are going to deliberately go out and, hurt and harm somebody. Or want to do something terrible to your wife or your children. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. But it's what we are supposed to do. Let's go to the other triggers of anger include hatred, frustration, lack of rule over one's spirit. I think uh, to Pastor uh, to Pastor West Point somewhere here. Hasty judgment, slow to anger. Be slow to anger. Don't just um, don't just react like that. Like I said, when you're angry, you say things that you are not supposed to say. You say things that you are supposed to. You do things that you are not supposed to to do. Uh, let's go to the next one. Quick temper. Let's read uh, Second Samuel. Let's go back again. Let's look at our Second Samuel twelve five to seven. What does it say? We have about ten minutes. Second Sam, uh, Second Samuel twelve five to seven. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, "As the Lord liveth, the man that." I done this surely, and he was actually talking to him. So he didn't know. So sometimes perceived anger, like they said in the beginning of this, sometimes you just, it's just your perception. It's just your perception. So they, later, Nathan told him that you are the same person. You know, you are the same person. There's another, there's another point I, want, I was going to bring out from, from before we go to the dealing with anger. Anger is, a dangerous, anger is dangerous because it can result in murder and other and other dest- destinies. It also stirs up strife, ruins good relationships, 
good relationship. I remember that um, when we were in ICB, I think it was uh, the provincial pastor, then our pastor, provincial pastor, provincial pastor now, Pastor Motosho's wife, that said that somebody had came to them in the church and I think I'd asked or was about to ask for this sister's hand in marriage. Some of us were there when they shared this. And the person came to church maybe to see or something to see the sister. She said, and when the person came, this sister was so hungry. You see the madness part that they talked, they said in the beginning? It was like that. And the person said, no, 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 no. <laughs> maybe I didn't hear God clearly. <laughs> uh, so the marriage did not happen. I believe. Pastor, did they marry? But not that brother. Ah. And the person who was already saying, Pastor, I'm interested in somebody in your church was in. That's the day she chose to fight somebody in the church. So we need to be careful. Sometimes those things are inspired by the devil to take people away from their destiny. It's a real life story. <laughs> So, yes, Rafa, me, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I'm so happy about what Pastor Bolari talked about because that was, I've been trying to hold myself back from going there. I didn't want them to Go say, there. Let's, say uh, we're, uh, we're being too spiritual. But the truth is, you know, there are things the world looks at and there are things we are not of this world. Uh -huh. So the truth is, anger, fear, and anxiety are three gateway spirits the enemy uses to enter your life at any point in time. So, sir? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so, so, and medically, you also see that it, it goes in the genes. If you, if you like anger, you to follow your children. And no, you can check it. True. Yeah, so, you know, it, the, the earlier you start dealing with yourself, beating yourself black and blue, anytime this comes up, the better for you, because you know generations to come, there will be bigger problems. Amen. Let's go with uh, dealing with anger. How do we deal with anger? How do we deal with it? Let's project that very quickly. Dealing with anger. If you have, please, let's have it. You see, this is church. I want us to, this is what I want us to take away, that uh, it is not okay. And this is what they are telling us, to be angry. It is not okay. The Bible is not going to tell you that you should just go and be angry. It is not okay. So before you get to that point to do whatever, before you ruin that beautiful relationship, before you chase away your destiny helpers, before you... Don't be angry. So how do we do it? I think when I say something, we'll just wait for us. We'll, I'll, I'll come back to you. Oh, okay. Every believer must develop the ability to control his or her temper, particularly in stressful Brajide, please, yes sir. With the help of the Holy Spirit. So you need fruit of the Spirit because it's hard to control yourself, but I've also seen or had some people that will ask for forgiveness. I'm going to meet this person, oh, they're going to hear it. Father, forgive me. Father, for on their way, Father, forgive me. Maybe they even speak in tongues. Ah, hey, <laughs> You've been doing it. Your cup is full. Father, help me. You know, <laughs> if you're able to get to that point, why not talk to yourself? I think there's a place that, you, let's continue. There's a place that you, they actually advise us to, like, reason it. Talk to yourself. Let's continue. It is the ability to show proper behavior and or disagree appropriately without losing control of someone's, of one's emotions. So you are in charge. You have, this, you have the spirit of God in you. you know, the fruit of the spirit, Galatians 5.22. You have peace. You have joy. You don't want somebody else to ruin that. You don't want another person to ruin that joy for you. You don't want to lose your peace. You know, you don't want to lose your sanity. You know, you want to be sane. And you know, sometimes if you are not careful, they are going to turn it. They are very wise. They are very cunning. Because sometimes they are not believer like you or they are, they are not at the level that you are. They are going to turn it at my pastor if you see what they did. You know, they're not going to say uh, another human being. They're going to say, oh, that my HOD. My, so that you feel that uh, uh, your HOD should know better. And it makes sense too, too because to whom much is given, much is expected. You have a neighbor that is unbeliever. Now you are a believer. Now, but in your, in your, in your whatever community, 
Now they are, they, they don't even know, they are not even aware that you are a Christian because you have been angry. The way you just exhibit all this anger and all that. You have the barricade, I don't play here. The, you have the metal rule, my parking is here, the line stop right here, you know, and things like that. There's a way you communicate. I think communication is very key, like uh, she said. You know, there's a way you say no and no is not artful. You know, so it depends on how you, how, how you say it. It depends on how you say it. You know, so, but um, sometimes, like I said, the someone is not always a fast. Sometimes your children, your loved ones, and all that. Yes. When you know that somebody is trying to bring out the worst in you, like, the person knows your button and they are pressing it. You've already dealt with it to a certain extent, and truly, truly, their cup is full. What should you do? I'll go back to that. But it's always good for learn. Not, not always, don't let people know your, because I remember, I think it was Pastor Montesho that said, somebody told him that, Pastor, I brought this for you because I know you like this food. <laughs> ah, Pastor, I brought your, your favorite. I know you like it. He said from that, they like what? Who told you? <laughs> so don't let them know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's the, maybe that. But I also think that, um, I don't want to forget this. I think the first, dealing with anger, I think the first, number, the number one should be acknowledging it. That I, I, you have this problem. Oh, because you look at your wife and you've been saying all these awful things. And I think you should be able to come to that point. I'm just saying wife. Sometimes it could be the other way. Don't get me wrong, please. <laughs> you should be able to come to that point that, oh, wow, I've been, I've been mean. You know? And also the other and the wife, don't hold on to 30 years or 40 years uh, anger or whatever. Ah, you did this 30 years ago. I even have the letter. Somebody showed me a letter. He said, uh, this person wrote, the father wrote this letter in 1987. I have it here, just wait. And they brought the letter. I said, ah, you have this letter? Ah, okay. This is what, yeah, what do you call it now? I have a proof. What do you call it now? I think there's a way to say that. I have received. This is it. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, sir. You want to say something? Ah, okay, sir. You guys, sir. Oh, after. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, sir. Okay, sir. I'll eat you, sir. Just say, because we are in the we are in a spiritual uh, system, and so we should talk from this uh, from this um, hindsight. These issues of maybe issues of anger and what have you is not something that is entirely that can be dealt with entirely physically. When you become a child of God, your spirit automatically joins to that of God. So you have the spirit of God in you. But so you are declared born again. But indeed, indeed, you are still not born again in the real sense of it. What I mean by that is this that the transformation has not taken place. Being born again is a clear direct with a short process. It's a, it, it will happen immediately. But for somebody to be born, really born again, it takes a process. And I'm not being spiritual, but I'm telling you the, what is called the fruits of the spirit. That is, your spirit having joined with the spirit of God, it's like a seed that has been sown. Over time, it will bear fruit. But that process, moving from the point whereby you got born again, and for these things, it's not just anger. Some people are naturally wicked in the mind. They are just, I mean, they are, they are, anger, I mean, they are, these are things that we see. Some people are just, they are naturally envious. When you see somebody doing well, they are mad, but then they will not show it. So those are defects of the natural man. But with the incoming of the Spirit of God, it needs to, the Spirit of God needs, it's like a seed that has been planted which now needs to be watered. And that's why in the church, we say you should come, believers class, uh, baptisma class. All of these, they are watering, nurturing that seed that has been sown at the point of salvation that will eventually come. And that's why you see it, it, we might not see it physically or we might not know the point whereby it happened. That's why somebody said, hey, it's because I'm a Christian, it's, it's because I've now, it's because of this church, you know, if you know me, 
when I was, that person, a change has happened. Why? Because the nurturing, you can also, you can also connect the dots in terms of over time. He was here when they were saying that don't beat your wife. He was here when they said that this is the way to conduct yourself in the society. All of these things that we are talking about, all of these issues that we are, that we are talking about, it goes inside and for a willing heart, it transforms. So that's one way of dealing with anger. Make sure you come to church. Simple. Over time, if you are a child of God, it will, it will bear fruit. And then you will generally see the things will be going. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish in one minute. Um, I like what Pastor said. I was going to say that it's a sign of uh, maturity. It's a sign of maturity. You cannot be the same person that you used to be. All things must have been gone. It says, as you grow, as you grow, you must be dropping, you must be dropping those, um, those vices along the way. And it, I, I was going to also add that it is very important to pray. There are some things that you can't undo on your own. You can't do it on your own, but you have to acknowledge to God that in this area, I don't call it uh, weaknesses. I call them uh, the areas of growth, areas where you want God to help you, that in this area, Father, help me. I need your help in this regard. I've been, I've been doing it over and over again. I need your help. Admit it, and the Lord will help you. Let us uh, pray. Uh, Damala, pray for us. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes, sir. Sanctimonious about it. Yes. For somebody, it is anger. For some other people, they have everybody has his own defect that you are carrying that people will not know. So you need to know that the Adamic nature is there, which needs to be transformed. You the earliest, as you have mentioned, to act the earliest you acknowledge it, you know that oh, this is an issue, and you want God to help you. Every one of us we have it. We have our own defect, which the Spirit of God needs to work on. And so we'll bear the fruit of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you because today is the day you've made and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the privilege of seeing today. Be thou highly exalted in the name of Jesus. We thank you for bringing us together to gather at your feet to learn. We just pray that these words that we've heard, O oh Lord, will bear fruit in our hearts in the name of Jesus. We just pray, Heavenly Father, that you will transform us from within in the name of Jesus. We just pray, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit will cause us to renew our minds daily in the name of Jesus. We just pray, Heavenly Father, that our lives shall be exemplary lives unto many in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for answering our prayers. And we commit our service today in your, into your hands. We just pray that you take absolute control in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen.